Okay, let's get going. I see lots of people have joined us, so I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Thank you so much for being with us. We have a full agenda as we're going to talk about UVM's post-bac pre-medical program. I'll go through that agenda briefly for you. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to make note of the chat box, and I see we've already had a comment in there, which is great. That's where you want to ask your questions today. I will keep an eye on those questions for you and make sure that we can get those answered. If there's a chance we run out of time and we didn't get to your question, we'll make sure to put our email address up at the end. Please do follow up with us. We do have a very active chat functionality on our website, so you can always speak to us directly as well as email. And the session is being recorded. We will share it out with everybody post webinar session. Okay, so we're going to do brief introductions. We're going to go over what is the UVM post back pre medical program. What are some of the amazing benefits of UVM's program? We're going to talk and, and learn a little bit about what our post back students have been doing amongst the pandemic. Some really interesting opportunities. Um, our virtual um, post back hub. What is a virtual community? What are some of the components that have been really active and a wonderful resource for our students? And of course, the question, how do you build a strong candidacy in order to get into what other health and medical school, whatever your aspirations are? How do you build that candidacy? We'll talk about that. And um, the list of schools that our students go to is very long. We'll talk about that, that medical schools want UVM's post back students. And we'll explain a little bit more about that. And then we'll, of course, go over some of those um, application questions and deadlines as well. And we're going to hear from some of our students today, too. My name is Nicole DeWillie Fenton. I'm the Content Marketing Manager in our Continuing and Distance Education Department. I'm so happy to have you here with us today. And also joining us is Beth Taylor Nolan. She is the Associate Dean of the Continuing and Distance Education Department, and she runs our post back program. This was her vision many, many years ago, so we're so fortunate to have her still leading the program as well. Thank you, Beth, for being with us today. Okay, so we're going to dive in. We've got a lot of great information to go through today. So I wanted to start with this slide because there's a lot of reasons why you might be considering a post back program. And we would love to hear and, and learn what you're, what you're thinking about as well today. But these are some of the reasons why people are drawn to our post back program. And I'm going to have Beth kind of walk through some of the points. And some of the major ones are, of course, Burlington and connection to University of Vermont Medical Center. Beth, do you want to just walk us through some of the highlights of our program? Sure, I'd be happy to. Welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Beth Taylor Nolan, and I'm the director of the Post-Baccalaureate Pre-Medical Program. Um, I think we're a very uh, unique program in that we are located uh, adjacent to the College of Medicine and also the UVM Medical Center. Can I just ask, is anyone else hearing a uh, echo or is it just me? I don't hear an echo. Uh, okay, we'll see perfect, if anyone great. else is hearing okay. something. Good. Sorry if you're All hearing right, that. Just, I know that's distracting. I'll but. keep going. So we, um, UVM is a research university with a medical school and um, a whole host of graduate programs. Our post-baccalaureate pre-medical program is uh, situated within the College of Arts and Sciences, and you have a full access to courses throughout the university at the undergraduate and graduate level. So we are a career change program, and we are looking to help students not only access the prerequisite courses, but also access patient care and research opportunities. Do you want to keep going? So we, yeah, I'd be happy to. So um, we also work well with students to help them develop their candidacy. So we do MCAT preparation. We do have a committee letter process that helps assess students viability for medical school, dental school and osteopathic medical school. And then we help students who are interested in all sorts of other pre professional tracks. So if you're interested in becoming a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant, um, we work with all of the pre-health tracks. We have lots of personalized academic support, and I think we are um, fairly unique in that we don't have a set curriculum and we help students build a, a strong academic plan. 
And we hear so much from our post back students how flexible that plan is as well. And we'll look at the um, examples of curriculum. But I think it's also important, Beth, to, for prospective students to know that you're going to work very closely with them in terms of what they've already taken, where their strengths, where some of those weaknesses are, and to make a plan that's personalized to them. Exactly. So we take a look at your transcripts and what you have already taken. We don't want students to redo courses that are um, perfectly fine and serve as prerequisites. So we will build an individualized academic plan that includes not only the requirements for health professional programs, but also recommended electives. We have um, graduate courses that we can fill in in the glide year so that you can continue to earn um, coursework. And um, yeah, we take an individualized approach. Great, thank you, Beth. And you, you alluded to this, but let's just um, go over what are the different tracks because we see the majority of the students come in for the MD or the DO track, I understand that, but there's lots of other things. And I think the PA track is something that people are really interested in. We've had nurse practitioner, people are really interested in that track continues to grow, but maybe just give us an overview of what the options are here for students. Sure. So, Traditional medical school or osteopathic medical school is the largest number of our students. Um, we have a variety of other tracks that we work with students pre-vet, pre-dental. We have a nursing and health sciences program that features a lot of graduate programs and we prepare students for entry into physical therapy occupational therapy, nurse practitioner, and, um, and some other ones that are in development. Great, thank you very much. And happy to answer any questions along the way. So please don't be shy if you have a question um, about what you've seen so far. Um, we've got a lot to share with you today, but we wanna make sure to answer your questions. Um, one of the things that I think is so amazing about our location and connection to the medical center and the surrounding the network of the UVM Medical Center as well is the opportunity that our students have had to be working in healthcare during the coronavirus pandemic. Um, this picture that I have here on the slide has a lot of different pictures. We have a, a variety of videos on our website. You can hear from these students. We have a podcast where these students are describing their experience. And many, many students um, are EMTs. So we have a, a variety of different EMT um, opportunities for students as well. And so I just want everyone to know that this is an important thing to keep in mind um, that there is a lot of opportunity here and our students are on the front lines helping people um, as they are have been we've all been dealing with the pandemic um, and so one of the other things that I wanted to share too is the connection that everybody has um, in the post back community and so one of the most important things that I have always heard um, as I'm helping to tell the stories of our post back students is the community. It's not competitive. It is incredibly supportive. There's always opportunities to hold each other up and, and help each other because everybody is really um, aspiring towards the same goals. And so one of the ways um, with the world going remote for education in the last year was to de develop um, a post-bac pre-medical community hub. And it has turned into one of the most active um, opportunities for our students to engage with each other and support each other. Um, and so I think that's an important thing. And Beth, do you just wanna touch on, I have a few examples on this slide of things that happen and the, the opportunities in the hub, but you know, from your experience, what has this hub um, become for students and what is the value for our prospective students to know that this exists? Well, it's been a really great way for students to stay connected, especially in this um, in this COVID era. Um, and it's also been a wonderful way for us to archive resources. So we've had some really fabulous panel discussions. We've had students share their own experiences 
with perhaps virtual shadowing or maybe they've attended a workshop that um, the College of Medicine put together for us. And now it's all archived here and it's a centralized portal where students can come back time and again and revisit things that maybe they didn't have time to participate live. Um, it's also been a way for, for students to, to talk with one another, you know, about their coursework or, or about what their interests are. So I think it's become a very central feature of our program and it's here to stay. And I think we're only going to put more time and energy into it. Great. That's that's great explanation. Thank you. I know that the students have really enjoyed it. And you see a picture there on the left side of the screen of one of our um, postback students, and she is a ambassador to the program. So what does that mean? You know, these are the students who are farther along in the process uh, of the postback program and can advise and help and guide um, people that are maybe just kind of earlier in the program, if you will. And I wanted to, yeah, and I think that's been so valuable for students. So um, speaking of ambassadors, uh, this gentleman here featured, Mr. Michael Nowick, is, um, he just finished up this past May, and he's in the process of taking his MCAT, um, and he also was an ambassador as well. So I want to share his story. We're going to play a video. It's a couple minutes long. Um, maybe not quite. <laughs> and so I want everyone to just know that we're, Beth and I are just going to turn off our cameras. We're going to, so that we can play the video full screen so you can see it. And I want you to just hang on because Beth and I are going to continue this conversation and answer your questions. But we want you to have the opportunity to hear from Michael about his post back um, experience as well. So we'll be right back with you. So I went to high school in Vermont, uh, Ski Academy. I grew up ski racing at Pico. Um, and I went to college, I ski racing at Boston College. I originally started the pre-med track. So then after college, I took a job um, in finance in Boston. And I just like didn't feel right. I enjoyed it, but I, it's always in the back of my head. I always kind of wanted to do medicine. And I, really, it's like athletics and sports medicine. I'm pursuing what I want to be doing. But another thing is, since I've gotten older, one, another thing I've realized is Location's a big thing for me. We're at a crossroads. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try post back because it's something I always wanted to do. Kind of leading me here. I've thought about it a bunch. I've done bigger cities. I'm more like, I like my activities. I like being really close to the mountains. For me, it was like, if I have the chance to link to UVM, which is in Vermont, which is where I really want to be, like, I might as well do that. It's a big, you know, scary thing. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to take. Uh, Cam over the summer, we'll see like no pressure and see how it goes. I got into the groove and then I just kind of did it and I finished Orgo, Bio, Biochem, and then Physics last summer. And so now I'm studying for the MCAT. The mountains are here. Um, it's an awesome place to be. You're going to be studying a lot. When you're not studying, you can go sneak like a run up Mad River and come back or there's some mountain biking trails close by. But I definitely think um, being on campus is like a special part of the program. You get to study in the library right there. It's motivating. The hospital's right there. It's definitely, that was definitely like very like motivating and inspiring. If it's one of those things that you really want to do, go and do it. Don't be afraid. I love the words that he shares at the end. You know, if it's something that you want to do, go and do it. Don't be afraid. Um, and it's a big step, you know, when we recognize that. Um, for many of you who may be with us today, you've been thinking about um, a career in medicine. So um, I think it's great to hear Mike saying he thought about it for a long time too, but um, he's really finding the experience valuable and now he's in the process of applying to med school. So um, definitely want to hear your questions. I'm seeing some people type, so we'll keep an eye on those. But Beth, let's talk about this. One of the things that we mentioned before is, is EMTs and the experience that our students have access to. Um, these, I've got two slides coming up here that show opportunities outside of the classroom. And one of the things that I know that you do and the advisors in our program is analyze with a student, well, what experience do you need? 
what, what do we need to do to build your candidacy to make sure that you are as strong as possible to get into whatever the next step is? So maybe just, you know, all of this stuff isn't necessarily happening right now, but this is a snapshot of all of the things that typically our students ha have access to. Can you just explain right. a little bit of that? Sure. So you're right. There is a lot of um, more to it than just taking the science courses and, um, and earning a, a strong grade point average. So we'll um, analyze with a student, you know, what are the things that they need to be focused on? Do they need more patient care? Do they need more exposure to research? Perhaps they've never had an opportunity to do some sort of scientific inquiry. So we have a whole host of opportunities once we get post COVID where students can engage in um, say a volunteer position at the hospital uh, or a volunteer research uh, opportunity with um, someone from the College of Medicine or a clinical practitioner from the from the hospital. So our students are very active and um, busy. They've been very creative and I think very resilient in the past year in terms of finding uh, ways in which to satisfy those um, extracurricular activities. So, um, you know, I think we've learned a lot about what students need and how to community service is a big part of the program and engaging with the community. I mean, having people who maybe don't have any advantages as, as some in our program do. So it's a multifaceted approach and highly individualized. And I think the, right. the strength also of our community is that we're small enough to get students really um, engaged with folks. Absolutely. And in normal times, and this, this will start to hopefully level out a little bit, um, some pieces coming back. Um, so many opportunities to learn. You know, I, I think about the um, the medical edu the education series and the grand rounds and many of our yes. post back students say, I just happened upon a discussion and I popped in because they are studying in the medical center. And so you're really immersed in the world of medicine and all of these different opportunities are there for our post back students. Um, I know we have a couple questions coming in. I'm going to get to those in just a moment, um, but let's just talk about this as well. These are just two sample curriculums. Um, Beth, just walk us yeah. through what does this look like for students? So so for, for medical school and dental school, there's a pretty set curriculum of, you know, two semesters of biological sciences, general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and, and we often see biochemistry, microbiology, and statistics, um, some sort of medical statistics uh, in the mix. So we will take a look again at your transcript, what you may have already had or, or what you might not, not um, you might want to retake something. Um, we don't encourage a lot of redoing. We, we like to move students to a higher level, but we will work very closely with you to develop an, uh, a really, I think, comprehensive academic plan. Now with the other tracks, with physician assistant programs and nurse practitioner programs, there are not set prerequisites. So we work with students to identify pretty early on what are the maybe 10 or so schools or programs that they're interested in? And then we will customize um, a list of requirements and put together your academic plan. So we offer all of the core sciences in the academic year and in the summer session. So it's a pretty good way to access a year round, a 12 month curriculum. Absolutely. And many, many students, and we'll talk about some of the admission deadlines um, do start in the summer, kind yes. of testing the waters a little bit. Um, and, and this is a great question from Matt. Matt, I want to address your question right now. Um, Matt asked general question about guidance to, on the recommended letters, um, the required recommended letters. I've been out of school for a while, so academic recommendations are not that easy to come by. Do you advise that I take some undergrad or grad courses somewhere to obtain these? No, no. Um, you don't need to, and and you you for for you're talking about for entry into our program, correct? Yes, I'm thinking. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so you just need a, a letters of recommendation, maybe from a supervisor or a colleague who can speak to your um, maybe as a community service um, person who's observed you working with I don't know someone on a project. So no, you can be creative about who um, provides those letters of recommendation, and we're not we're not strict at all about 
that they must come from uh, your undergraduate institution. Great. Awesome feedback. I know we get that question a lot too. And I want to yeah. answer this question too. Viera asked, um, I, I like that Mike in the video was saying you can do biochem. Um, could you do industrial chemistry or other courses that you could do to prepare also for med school? So um, the, the chemistry track is probably the most prescribed of any of them. So it is eight credit hours of general chemistry and then eight credit hours of organic chemistry and we throw in three credit hours, three to four credit hours of biochemistry. It's interesting that you say industrial chemistry. UVM doesn't have an equivalent of industrial chemistry, but that is exactly what we would do. We would work with you to, you know, maybe have our chemistry department analyze um, the components of a, of a course that you've taken so that we can put you in the appropriate next level. So it's all about making sure that you hit the prereqs and that you're covering the material that is on the MCAT exam. So those are the kinds of things that, we'll, that we would work with students on. Great. I want to um, answer Reed's question as well, Beth, while we're still on the curriculum. And then I want to come back to Michael's other question related to um, kind of outside of the classroom um, opportunities. Mm -hmm. Reed says, I was told the start date of summer depends on what classes I'm taking. Is this up to me? Yes, it's definitely up to you. Um, we as students start every semester, and um, including spring, and we make sure that, um, you know, that we're building a plan. It's a building block approach for sure, and there are prerequisites for higher level courses, but you can, you can begin the program any semester. Great. And thank you for that great question. I'm going to zip back because I see a couple questions, one from Michael and another one um, looks like Semina Mia also asked what are grand rounds. And so, um, let me go back to Michael's question so you know what that is too, Beth. Are there clinics, grand rounds involving psychology and psychiatry? Um, yes. Why don't we do an overview? What is grand rounds and what are some of these other things that, that students can take a part of? So grand rounds are an initiative between the UVM Medical Center and the Larner College of Medicine and, and they have included our students in these programs. So lately, of late, they've been doing grand rounds virtually, and they do hit topics, everything ranging from, you know, sort of um, epidemiology of late, public health. Um, we've had um, sessions on psychiatry and mental health concerns in COVID. So it does run the, um, a, a broad array of medical topics. And it's typically led by a subject matter expert, again, from the hospital or jointly with the College of Medicine. And, and students are invited to participate and ask questions. And um, I think it's been a, a terrific collaboration. And it's something I always hear from students that the opportunity to sit in these experiences in the medical school and the medical center are incredibly valuable. And I see a lot yeah. of other questions. So I'm going to pause on some of those questions for just a moment. We'll get through a little bit more information and we've got great questions coming in and more info awesome. to share with you. So one of the things that I think is important, and I've got several slides here, there's no intention for you to have to read all of this or for have Beth go through this, but we just want you to understand that this program sets you up for success. So this is a sampling of all of the different schools that our post -bac students get accepted into. And the list is long, um, which is a credit to what an incredible program that Beth has developed and the faculty here at UVM. But these are the kinds of schools that our students go to. So, you know, maybe you're seeing some of your favorites on this list, or maybe there's something new. Um, and I think it's also important too um, to, to see other fields um, because, you know, there's, as we've said, physician assistant. That's something that a lot of people are interested in. We have a track, veterinary schools, some of the top veterinary schools in the country our students get into. And then some other opportunities, you know, science um, PhD or genetic yes. counseling, some of these other programs that a lot of our students are interested in that, that might not be something that they're thinking of. The one thing I wanted you to also think about, Beth, is, is address that, you know, you may come in as a student and say, I definitely want to be a doctor. Um, but you might start learning about some of these other opportunities right. through things like grand rounds, 
through some of the opportunities by being associated with a medical school that you may change your mind and go a different direction. Yeah. How does yeah. our program help people to move in whatever direction that they're interested in? So, I mean, I think that's really important because we approach this with a very open mind with students because you may come in and say, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure that I'm headed towards medical school. What are some other fields or, or health professions, graduate programs that I should be thinking about? So we'll work with students. Oftentimes, we'll have parallel academic plans in, in motion for a student because they're not quite sure whether they're going to go into physician assistant or med or nurse practitioner. So it's, so, so it's very common for students to be exploring multiple pathways. We, we do zero in pretty quickly because, um, you know, the prerequisites do, um, it, it's important that you get on the right academic plan. But it's not uncommon for students to be, um, to switch gears midstream, and, and that's totally fine. And you would just work with your academic advisor to, you know, fine tune your academic plan. Great, thank you. I just think that's an important point because um, yeah. sometimes students, you know, you learn something and and you didn't know that that field was out there, and you're just really, um, yeah, keeping open to that possibility. Absolutely. So let's, yeah, let's get into some of these questions, Beth, because I know that some of those questions are popping into the chat box as well. So we hear you on, you know, what are the opportunities out there to gain more experience? Um, what are classes going to look like in the fall? So let's go through these, Beth. Let's start with summer. Sure. Um, are they hybrid? Yeah. Is it online? What's going on in the summer? So um, we have a combination of course, um, delivery types being offered this summer. The chemistry department, for example, is offering all of their general chemistry and organic chem chemistry courses in person. We feel very strongly about um, having students on campus. So we do have um, that as an option. Um, and um, the university, we're working with the university in the state of Vermont regarding COVID-19 protocols that will need to be in place for students to be safely engaging with us on campus. So those um, protocols will be uh, available as of May 1st. So if you're coming to campus, we'd, we'd love to have you. Um, and we are creating a, a, you know, a safe environment for students to come and participate. Um, other courses are being offered fully online. So biology, for example, is completely 100% online and um, as well as physics. So there's a mixture. Um, and um, last summer we were, we flipped to 100% remote um, pretty much within a day. And I think we had a, a really strong um, program in the summer. And I think our faculty have learned a lot about how to deliver high quality science courses remotely. Absolutely. And so what's the fall going to look like? I know that I'm seeing some questions about that as well from our students. Yeah. So our, our president has come out with a pretty strong statement about UVM returning to um, an in-person experience in the fall. Um, I do believe that there will be some um, remote learning opportunities, but, but I think there's a, there's a pretty strong commitment to a, a return to campus. Um, that said, if um, things do not progress the way that we hope them, hope that things will get better and, and folks will get vaccinated, um, we do have a backup plan. There's always a backup plan. So, um, so our professors and our courses are easily uh, adapted to remote learning. Now, they, they <laughs> learned fast. Right. Yes, as I'm, I'm sure everybody with us today too. Um, this is a question, and I know I saw this, I think, in the chat too. Um, how long does it take? And I know it depends, but typically, Beth, how long does it take people to complete the program? So if you're missing all of the requirements or, or need, missing is the wrong word, if you need all of the requirements, um, it typically takes three semesters, perhaps four, depending on how many science courses you would like to take in one time. So if a student, for example, starts in the fall, it's entirely possible to take biology, chemistry, and physics in the fall and the follow-on courses in the spring and wrap things up with organic and biochemistry in the summer. That is a 
rapid pace and um, and then we layer on some patient care and research opportunities and that's a full a full plate for students so um, and and there's always the option to go part time and to do things on a slower track so it really does depend um, but I would plan minimally three to four semesters. Great. And I know a question also came in from Arissa, and I think that might have also come in from someone else too. Housing. Where where do our post back students live? So most students live in the in the Burlington community or an, in adjacent communities. Um, mm -hmm. Winooski is a community that's that's quite close to the campus, and many students live live there. Um, we have again in the post back hub make announcements for students who are interested in looking for maybe a roommate or um, someone to sublet their apartment. But it, in general, students um, live in apartment housing, which in the in the greater Burlington community. Right, and I I haven't seen any challenges with people finding places. It, it seems that again the post back community often is looking for new post backs to take over their leases, especially find good spots yeah yes um co Pretty tight costs group. yeah they're very so the cost Beth, this is always a important question for everybody so it um ubm is a state institution so if you are a vermont resident you will pay um in-state tuition and in-state tuition is is um by the credit hour and if you are an out-of-state student you will pay out-of-state tuition so there is um there is a chart in our um, tuition chart that I would encourage students reference, um, and it is by the credit hour. So it just depends on whether you're in or out of state and how many credit hours you're taking. Right. And, and so how do you recommend? There's a lab fees and, and books, materials. Great. Yeah, I was going to make sure that we factor in some of that. And what do you recommend students do? They maybe take a look at what classes they might be thinking they would need and then start just doing the math and start figuring out what it might be. And then is there an average of, of rent that, that you would share with people? Well, that's a really good question, and I think it varies quite a bit. I would consult something like um, Zillow or one of the um, rental um, websites. Because I think it really does depend on how close you want to be to campus. If you want to be within walking distance to campus or biking distance to campus, I think those, those rents are um, a little bit higher than if you're willing to live a little bit further from campus. So it really does depend. Um, you know, if you're bringing a pet, if you're bringing your dog, um, you know, those are those are things that, that just factor into um, the mix. But um, the you know, Burlington is a college town, so if you are familiar with a college town, we're not San Francisco by any stretch, but we are a um, pretty, pretty typical college town. So yeah, I'm and probably skirting the, the actual number, but I would encourage folks to, to take a look at the resources. Yep, absolutely. And I know Fiona's, Fiona's asking, what's the cost of living in Burlington? Um, we can follow up yeah. with some more information on that, too. Yeah, yeah. I'd be happy to. Sounds good, thank you. Okay, so let's go back to some of these questions too. And I do see more coming in, so don't don't go away, everybody. I'm going to get to your questions. But um, how do you connect with other postback students? And we've talked about the virtual, um, and, and maybe we'll see what the fall looks like. But we usually have a postback reception, um, a real yeah. wonderful opportunity for all postbacks to get together. Um, but you know, what are the different ways that postbacks connect? Yeah. It's a really good question. Um, so, so post back students are merged in with undergraduate students in um, the basic science curriculum, and then it spreads out a little bit further when you get into higher level sciences or graduate level sciences. You're in with graduate students. Um, I think the unique thing about the post back pre med program is that you find each other pretty quickly in the science classes. It's the the faculty often. Um, say the first two rows are always taken up by post back pre-med students who tend to all uh, congregate together and, and sit together and take advantage of office hours and, and help sessions. So I think it's largely through classes initially that you folks get to know one another. 
but it's a um, it's a pretty great group of students. Um, students form study groups. They help one another. Um, it's a very collaborative environment. Um, it's not uncommon for all post back students to do really well. So I think that um, some students have said to me, you know, this is not what I, I expected. A competitive environment. I didn't expect such collaboration and helping one another. So um, I think it's a pretty wonderful group of students. And then the other place where you all get to interact is through um, patient care and research opportunities. So a lot of times um, students will pass down their patient care or volunteer position to an, an, the next incoming group of post back students. So it's a very community focused group. And very supportive, um, that I yes. can tell you. Okay, so then, and I know we've had this question a couple different times, so if this was one of your questions, please uh, listen up to this because it's a big one. How are research volunteers shadowing patient care? How has that been possible during COVID? And then looking forward, I know you don't have the crystal yeah. ball, Beth, but looking forward, what do you anticipate opportunities that could be coming for students? Well, I have 24 years of experience with a, with a very open and viable patient care and research opportunity and one year of COVID. So, um, so during COVID, um, yes, things, things shut down and shut down pretty quickly. And our students were um, very resilient and creative in terms of finding other ways to give back to the community. So we um, expanded the notion of patient care to community care. And a lot of people were volunteering through, um, I don't know, through the Red Cross, through, um, through after school programs, through nonprofit organizations that were trying to distribute food or to help um, folks get resources. So we expanded our notion of patient care to community care. And I think that that's been um, a really great experience for our students. Um, many more students got paid positions, which are really, instead of just focusing on um, volunteer and shadowing, a lot of our students got paid positions within the hospital or within the healthcare community. So that's been really great because that has been um, just a wonderful experience for them to especially um, we had a lot of students pursue EMT work that they hadn't um, maybe they hadn't um, thought of becoming an EMT or um, you know we had students on the front line um, you know giving COVID tests and doing contact tracing so we put our students to work and I think um, they had a, I think they had ended up having a very good experience um, Research has been more challenging because the research labs that are run by the university, and, and this is a, a nationwide issue, have shut down because they couldn't have um, other folks in their, in their labs volunteering. We anticipate that will open up um, as soon as this summer and, and for sure by the fall. So we incorporated um, research into classes. So we have um, we have research woven into several of our elective courses so that students were getting a taste of research in that realm. But it is something that we are looking forward to getting back up and running. Absolutely, as are the students, I have no doubt. We have a great question back from Amanda. Are there opportunities for pre-veterinary students to complete yeah. clinical hours? Yeah, so what would that be like? Yeah. So, so every year we have, um, I would say five, maybe 10 pre-vet students who um, access our program. And um, we have lots of veterinary clinics that um, tend to small animals and large animals. We have, um, you know, lots of opportunities for students to either volunteer or to become um, veterinary assistants. Um, we have a cream program where students are introduced to um, dairy farming and to caring for um, the dairy herd that the university manages. So there's a lot of different opportunities and our animal science folks work very closely with us um, to provide access to those kinds of experiences. Great, great question. Thank you, Amanda. I don't know that we've had that question before, so that's awesome. Yeah, that's um, great. Let's, 
Yeah, let's keep moving a little bit too. So maybe we'll get to some of your other questions here, everybody. Um, the process to apply, and, and one thing I want you to maybe weave in, Beth, um, because Matthew was asking, um, how important is that undergrad GPA if you've been out of school and in the workforce for five plus years? So just weave that in um, when you talk about yeah. how we apply. So, so it's definitely um, not a one size fits all approach for sure. So um, we know that students have an easier time getting into medical school, the, the higher their grade point average is. Everyone is aware of that, and yet not everyone, you know, has that. And, and so we work with that. And so we will develop a plan. Maybe it's going to take a little bit longer. Maybe somebody's going to need to do graduate work or add a graduate certificate program. We also have a Master of Medical Science program that is an accelerated one-year master's program which feeds directly into the Larner College of Medicine. So we take a close look at, at people's um, academic records, um, what they've done in their um, time away from school, and, and also what motivates you. You know, why are you, why are you turning to this, turning to healthcare at this point in your career? So um, we talk with students but prior to submitting their application because we want to help you and support you throughout the process. Great. Hopefully that answered your question as well. Um, applications online, uh, personal statement, letters of recommendation we touched on. It does not have to be from undergrad. Um, it can be creative, I think. Um, yeah. Unofficial transcripts. You know, sometimes people yeah. do have trouble if, if they've been out of school for a while. How, how would someone approach that? So I would um, just contact your um, institution. Typically, we, we haven't seen students have, but we have some international students who have had struggles with getting access to their transcripts. Most folks um, who attended a domestic um, institution don't typically have any, have any difficulties. So um, unofficial, we don't need it to be an official stamped or, or um, endorsed, but just send, a, just send us a copy of your transcripts. And that includes right. everything that you've done. So it includes not only just your post back work, but if you've done um, any other coursework as an undergrad student. Great. Awesome. Thank you. And I know we still have a whole bunch of questions. I'm going to try to get through all of them. And let me just say, please, that if we don't get to your question today, um, I'm going to ask um, Kelly, who's on our team, to put up our email address um, in the chat box. And I also do have a slide here. Let me just put that up here so that um, you can write that down, give us a call. We also have chat on our website um, during the day. And so you can speak with somebody directly. So if we didn't get to your question today, please know that we would love to hear from you. Um, okay, so here's a couple more questions, Beth. Um, yeah. Glide year. Glide year. I know that's always a good one. And and one of our students um, that I just spoke with just recently, who's an alum come May, this past May, he was an alum, is taking our Master of Public Health program in his glide year. Yeah. So what are glide year opportunities that you see students kind of drawn to? So glide year is technically the, the year that it takes you to apply to um, medical and, and health professional programs. And we work with students to, to put together an academic or patient care or research plan. So it really is about figuring out what you wanna do for that year. And as Nicole was saying, we um, often see students do a Master of Medical Science program, which is a graduate program, or a Master's in Public Health, or a certificate program. So it, it definitely depends on, on you know, what part of your application you want to focus on. Many, many of our students will um, fill a void. So perhaps you didn't have as much time to focus on research. So maybe you're going to want to go get a clinical research position or, or a research assistant position. So we really work with you to figure out how to best use that time. And we support you throughout the application process uh, during the glide year as well. Great. Thank you. Um, I love this question, too, from Samuel. Um, the community, you know, we've talked a lot about the post -back community. Um, how many students typically are in the program? Um, and then, um, you know, is, are you paired with it? How, how does it work on the back end in terms of our support for our students as well? Sure. So we, we intake between um, probably no more than 70 students each year, and that is accounting for, for three semesters of intake. Um, and you are paired with a, with a pre-medical advisor um, a, who will help you with your, 
for your, you know, everything from course registration to, you know, um, spot checking your personal statement for your EMCAS application. So it's sort of everything in between. Um, we have three advisors on our team who can work individually with you. And then we have a lot of group sessions and a lot of, um, uh, you know, access to um, faculty and to, you know, other professionals. Great. Thank you. Um, wanted to answer this question from Marissa. Uh, MCAT. As you heard from Michael in, in the video, he is in the process of taking the MCAT. I think he's actually taking it now. But um, when do you take the MCAT? You know, is it, um, it's after you're done, but maybe just talk about that process, Beth. We lost you. I can try to share as much as I know, Marissa, about that. Um, is I'm usually back. post. I had oh, you're back. Sorry, just a little that's bit okay. of internet snafu here. Oh, uh, that's here. all right. Am I, am I back? You're back. Great. Okay, we're so happy okay. to have you. So, when do students take the MCAT? So, um, we have a lot of MCAT preparation opportunities, and we help students um, figure out what kind of MCAT preparation they would like to do. And we have a Kaplan um, course either online or in, and hopefully in person again, um, or students do self-study. But you do the MCAT at the end of the program um, when you've had all of the coursework. So um, typically students who, um, I'm working with students right now who are preparing for the committee letter process, they are likely taking the MCAT anytime between April and June. Um, and then we have students who will take it during the summer. So it really depends on where you're at in your academic. Great. Thank you. And I'm glad you're back. Um, this is a great one, too. Uh, resources for veterans. We, I speak with many veterans. I just spoke with a former uh, Air Force pilot the other day in our program. Um, please talk about the support that UVM offers um, in our postback program for veterans. Yeah. So we have David Carlson, who is an excellent resource, um, and we can put anyone uh, in touch with David because he helps students navigate their veterans benefits. So um, many students will access veterans benefits to help pay their tuition or, 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 and or their medical education as well. So we do have a dedicated resource within the university who helps you navigate all of those um, forms and policies. Um, and so we have worked with many veterans over the years who have really um, taken advantage of their benefits. So it's a, it's a great approach. Great. And I'm going to get to two more questions and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, again, if there's something we didn't answer, please reach out to us. Um, we would love to talk more with you. Um, Matt asked, what's the difference between the post -bac program and the MS in medical science? Oh, good question. So the post -bac program um, is designed specifically for people who um, who are looking for access to the coursework that, at the undergraduate level. Um, and our Master of Medical Science is designed for folks who maybe already have completed the undergraduate level prerequisite courses and want to pursue graduate study uh, in anticipation of applying to health professional schools. So that one is undergraduate, one is graduate, we work together. Great, thank you. And then um, I do see other questions coming in. I know there's so many great questions here. Um, quick one, Beth. Um, is there an interview? Is there an interview as part of the um, application process to post back? There's not one required, but we're happy to speak with students. Always happy to um, speak with students. Um, sometimes people want to give more explanation to um, something about their application. So we are very open to having students uh, request an interview. And then I wanted to just get to this last one from Miriam. Um, are there resources for paramedics? Oh, um, so we don't have a paramedic program per se, but I have worked with students who are paramedics and who access patient care opportunities based on that credential. So while we, we value that as a credential, we don't have it as a part of our program. Great, great. And so thankful for all of these wonderful questions. Again, I apologize if we didn't get to them all. We're going to sign off here in just about 30 seconds. But just wanted you to, to make note of those deadlines. There is rolling admission for summer, um, as we noted earlier. And then if you're looking towards the fall, you want to keep an eye on that July 1 um, deadline as well. Oh, it looks like Miriam is asking if there's any discount for experienced paramedics or paramedic experience, maybe. 
I, I don't believe so, but um, perhaps we could um, connect uh, offline and I could learn more about um, the nature of your question. Sounds great. Miriam, please do email us as well because um, we would love to connect with you and, and learn more about what you're asking yes. and what we can do to um, get to know what your questions and get more, to know more about you. Thank you, everybody. We will send the recording. Again, if there's any other questions, please do um, put them in an email, chat with us, and we'll make sure to get responses back to you. We hope to see all of you in our post back pre-medical program. We wish you all good health and a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Beth. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Look forward to working with you.